Hey everybody, it's me Rodney at Rustic Relics. Today we're going to be changing up some, uh, Transformation Tuesday and we're going to be doing something a little different. We're obviously going to be transforming this guy, but he is resin and we're going to take and turn him into what looks like a copper statue that is starting to age and get a lot of uh, corrosion going on. And I get asked a lot about these products, specifically patina paint by Dixie Bell. Today we're going to be using copper and here's the patina spray. So one of the important things is when you're using this stuff is to wear gloves and we're gonna be spraying this stuff outside. So we'll go outside and you'll see me do that. Uh, right now we're gonna start painting on this. So the most important thing to know is that when you're using patina paint, iron only works with green patina, okay? The green patina spray. Can't use the blue spray with it. They don't tell you that on anywhere except for on the canister. So if you read the back of the canister, it'll say, oh, you can only use the, the green patina spray with this. So luckily I didn't, I wasn't gonna make that mistake, but I'm sure people have, cause it's hard to read the back of the label and it's not really on the website anywhere that I've seen. So anyways, we're gonna get started. Uh, use a throwaway brush. So I'm using a, uh, it's like 25 cents a piece at Harbor Freight if you buy the big box. So if you're looking for a cheap chip brush, go to Harbor Freight Tools, they're right there. You can buy a whole box of them for hardly nothing. And that's what we're using here. And again, Harbor Freight, super cheap on these chip brushes. Usually I tell you that you get what you pay for with brushes, but when you're needing to throw it, just throw it away. You can't go wrong with a one-time use chip brush. So we're gonna get in and we're gonna paint all these little details on this guy. Cause he's got a lot of little nooks and crannies and a lot of crevices. We gotta lay down this base coat. So the special thing about this is it actually has me real metal filings in the paint. You know, you got your metallics and stuff like that. But this actually has real metal filings in it. Let me show you what I'm doing while I do it. That way you can see. And I may adjust the footage before production and zoom in on some of the stuff I'm doing. So you can see how the, the paint is, it's a little bit different than regular chalk paint. Because one, it's got the metal filings. Two, it's kind of smells. It's got a stronger smell than Dixie Bell does, which Dixie Bell's, you know, uh, really good paint, no VOCs or anything like that. But this, it's got some VOCs. I can smell them. Or maybe I should check and see if it does before I say that. But it smells like it does. So he's got a lot of little stuff going on. And this paint, I, I just noticed, you know, I've already shaken it up real good before I got here. I just noticed that this paint is really thin, okay? And you know what thin means, right? Thin means be careful because you're going to splash it all over the counter when you're using it. And I imagine it has something to do with the fact that it's got the, the, metal, the metal filament in it. Which is really cool because that's actually how it gets the effect. It's kind of like when you apply, get some steel wool and soak, your, soak it down in some vinegar. You know, that'll start rusting pretty quick. You can actually make your own uh, weathering stain using steel wool and vinegar. I don't know the exact recipe. I used to do it all the time when we would build furniture, which I hardly ever do that anymore. I haven't really had much time to do it. But see, this is the base coat that's going on. So you just want to make sure that you, you get down in everywhere. I know we always say that a lot in all of our videos, but that's it can't be understated. A lot of people miss that, so they end up having to go back in and paint it two or three times. When I want to paint it, just the one base coat and the one uh, main coat. Also, patina spray, if you're going to be painting metal with it, make sure that you use the prime start before you start using the patina paint because it can make metal rust through because it's a pretty
pretty powerful stuff here that we're using. I'm wearing gloves because I don't like metal filament getting on my hands. And I most definitely be wearing gloves and probably a mask when I start putting the uh, the uh, spray on there. I use a P100 mask for most things I do when it comes to sand and dust or uh, harmful chemicals. I'll wear one that's got a VOC blocker, cartridge type full face mask when you're working with thin paints like this you it's probably a good idea to also use goggles or uh, safety glasses keep it from getting in your face usually i'll use a uvex shield when i'm doing something that's kind of iffy but i'm going slow because i want to make sure that i get all the spots we're not going to do this too fast and we kind of want it to look like a statue when we're done but everybody that I've sold this stuff to has done some unique things with it, which is awesome. One customer actually painted their entire wall with patina paint and then went back in with the spray to make it look like it was. It, it's really awesome. She showed us photos and she did a really, her and her husband did a really good job on that. I would be using bronze, but it actually didn't ship out with my order. So I'm using copper instead, which I really like copper. Missy's not a big fan of copper, but I like copper a lot. So you just want to get in there, get it painted, make sure your little metal filings ever get in all over it. And you can actually see some of the larger specs of the metal filings. I just got that on the counter. She ain't gonna like it. Cause like I said, this isn't the same as chalk paint. I should have used a bigger piece of cardboard. This is really soupy. If you've never used it before, this is a really soupy product. I like it though so far. It's going on pretty, pretty good. I'm just having to make sure I pay special attention. This is a cheap Harbor Freight brush, so I am getting some some of the uh, bristles falling out of it. That's to be expected. I even hit it with a... Uh... Oh, no, I didn't either. If you take a, a screwdriver, like a Phillips head screwdriver, use the round end and hit, uh, take your brush and brush it over that a few times, usually you can knock out a lot of your loose bristles. And usually I do that before I start painting anything, but today I did not. I guess I was too excited about getting started on this because I've been wanting to do this one for a while, this particular video, especially since so many people have been asking me the questions about it. And, uh, sometimes it's easier to show and I can't show you live in the store. So it kind of works out that I'm showing you here on this video. But if you want to sign up for one of our Dixie Bell paint classes, we do those every Saturday. Well, not every Saturday. We have it posted on our website at rusticrelish.com. You can sign up, and you do need to sign up online because if you want to, if you pay for it in the store, come by the store and pay for it, then it's harder for me to track that you're taking the classes. So I'm actually using our website to actually track who all is taking the classes. So I can get send out reminders and everything via text message or email. And it's just easier for me to do that if you sign up online. Which is the only way I'm accepting the classes. Because sometimes easier is better. Especially when it comes to that. Keeping track of who all is doing what. Phone numbers when they need to go automatic reminders. So I don't know if you can see, but our little cherub has a nice base coat, a nice even base coat. And I won't bother with the uh, sh showing you the second coat. We'll skip straight to me spraying the uh, stuff on there when I'm done with the second coat. 
because I have to do it wet or while it's starting, while it's in the process of drying, I have to spray it down on it. And I'll explain more in more depth when we get to that point. All right, so we're gonna cut right here and then we're gonna skip to the next part. Okay guys, I kind of lied to you. I forgot that I have to put this on and then spray it right after on my second coat. So here we go, we're gonna be quick. All right, make sure, you make sure you shake it up. Got a new chip brush and we're just gonna start getting it on there pretty quick while it's still, uh, we're gonna spray it while it's still wet. So just make sure we get all over, dab this paint in, wipe and brush it in, however you want to do it. A lot of people like the, the stippling. I like it too, but not for this. I want it to be a nice, clean look. It's got enough texture as it is. So we just want to make sure that we get it nice and wet all over with our paint obviously it doesn't matter if we get it too wet everywhere because we're going to be going back in with the spray and we don't want it to be totally getting that texture or that uh, corrosion look all over we just want it to be in certain areas Kinda, but I don't really care about that. I just want it to be cool looking. And I think this is gonna turn out fantastic. Cause he's got a lot of little areas that the spray can actually just run down and create like a, a cool little effect using the patina spray. All right, so now, we got our paint on there. Make sure we close our jar really good because we don't want to get this spray in there. I always like to keep the cardboard seal that comes with it intact. Make sure you get it tight. All right, guys, so we want to make sure we shake this up real good before we start spraying it, okay? Just like we did with the paints. I wanted to be wearing gloves while I did this, but whatever. It's gonna smell like Easter egg dye. Right, there we go. Now we're just gonna randomly spray it. Spritz it with the blue stuff. And you see it's already doing some stuff, so that's really cool. All right, so we're gonna give it to about two hours. We're gonna check back on it, and then uh, we'll see you then. All right, guys, so this is the final results of our little project. And I think it turned out really well. The Looks like a copper statue that's got quite a bit of uh, corrosion going on. It reminds me of uh, copper pipes up under the crawl space before you replace them. It's really cool looking. I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I hope this gave you some kind of insight on how to use Dixie Bell Patina paint. See y'all later.